but I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. AI will be smarter than humans by 2029 before we merge with machine. Google chief says, uh, independent July 2017, Facebook's artificial intelligence robots shuts down after they start talking to each other in their own language. What? At first, no way. Are you at, serious? At first, they assumed that it was just gibberish, but then they were speaking in a language that the humans didn't know. We're talking about smart cities now where everything can literally be locked down. Because in Egypt, for example, ancient Egypt, they had street lamps, they had batteries. And they rate people according to how law-abiding they are. Again, this is a very dangerous oh, way of confirmation. God. UK, they've got a technology called Orovision Labs. Sweden, they are already putting chips in people. You've got XKS, which is the information sharing of global data by New Zealand, Australia, Japan, Germany, UK, Canada. It's okay for your privacy to be invaded because you're moral, you're not doing anything wrong. Mm. That's not the point. The point is the information that they'll get from your living, they will use it against you to promote their own agenda. Now the problem is when artificial intelligence is being created by people who let's face it, cannot be trusted morally. By Ehud Shapiro, he developed a DNA-based computer which was 100,000 times faster than a regular PC. Interesting. Nanobots will be injected into your body and they will actually go to certain cells, correct them. You know what? You may not have an Islamic answer for this. I'm talking about the actual memory. I'd have to see the evidence for that, that though. Downloaded and uploaded. Big think. Uh, Michao Kaku also discussed this in June 2016. The Guardian also said this in March 2015. Yeah, and uh, independent again, May 2017, scientists carry out full uh, head transplant of rats. He says brain net is to replace the internet. Elon Musk, he's uh, working on something called a Neuralink, which is the brain internet. It is actually given the responsibility to think and decide targets for itself. No. Are you going to say that there are no other dimensions? Well, I don't know, it depends what you define as a dimension, but if you see the dream world as an example of another dimension, well, there you go, there is other dimensions. That scientists create murder-obsessed psychopath AI and it learned everything from Reddit. BBC Radio 4 program, this was like two years ago, I think, and they were talking about AI rights. Humans will become as irrelevant as cockroaches. Have we understood who we are first? Mm. Yeah, have we explored ourselves? Do we actually know what it means to be a human being? Shouldn't there be noise coming out? Nah. Like this. I can just... Nah, I'll just add some sound effects later. <laughs> just mute, mute your ones. <laughs> files i keep files on them hey bruh bruh listen on the go on soundcloud and itunes links in the description assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to this special episode of declassified with my brother hamza sultzis assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam <laughs> it's of course wajib for me to reply using the full salam because he's put me under that pressure. Today's episode is very special. I'm very excited and I, I just can't wait. Not because he's turned up, because of the topic that we're going to be discussing. Yes. It's going to be on artificial intelligence. Yes, sir. It's going to be about the military grade artificial intelligence killer robots cyborgs consciousness you're going to talk about neuro just just give me one sec we're going to be talking about nanotubes we're going to be talking about dna computing quantum sorry just give me one sec we're going to be talking about quantum computing. We're going to be talking about 5G. We're going to be talking about loads of stuff, in other words. 
and it's very important and I haven't heard anybody talk about this uh, from our background sure Islamic tradition I'll do my best many of the things that you've mentioned I probably don't have much to say on but let's let's do it that's very disappointing <laughs> <laughs> let's do this nanotube what the hell is a nanotube <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna know you're gonna know we're gonna talk and DNA ab- computing that's mad interesting we're gonna start off first by contextualizing this whole AI threat this is our friend Elon Musk Musk yes I've seen this not this one oh, I haven't from one and a half hours worth of interviews I took out the most yep. important bits for us I'm really quite close to I'm very close to, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows and the rate of improvement is exponential in 2016 Google DeepMind's AlphaGo beat 18 time world champion Lisa Dole in 4 out of 5 games. Now, normally a computer beating a human at a game like chess or checkers wouldn't be that impressive. There are over 10 to the 170 moves possible in Go. To put that into perspective, there are only 10 to the 80 atoms in the observable universe. A brand new AI called AlphaGo Zero beat the original AlphaGo 100 to 0. 100 games in a row. The most impressive part? It learned how to play with zero human interaction. By itself. And nobody would suggest that Machine we learning, allow yeah. anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. In fact, it will be used as a weapon. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. You see the gaps in his speech, and the way he's just That's staring down. Futile. And it will be able to improve itself. Yes. That's where it gets spooky, right? The idea that it can do thousands of years of innovation very, very quickly. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. But your phone is already an extension of you. You're already a cyborg. You will be essentially snapshotted into a computer at any time. If your biological self dies, you could just probably just upload into a new unit. So, wow. so that's putting things uh, in context about why we're actually discussing this topic and the relevance and importance and magnitude of it. Yep, absolutely. At this moment in time, because we are on the cusp. We are on the cusp. Yes. Oh, I've, and I have said that in the UK in the next 20 years, I think we're going to see people marrying robots and it's going to be enshrined in law and there will be AI rights. Life 3.0, some people call it. Oh my god. The fourth age, others call it. Wow. We know it simply as artificial intelligence. Let's first discuss the difference between AI, because you've got weak AI and you've got strong AI. There is no difference, bro. Well, there is. There there is. A A robot is going to be human. No, but... We're going to marry robots. Let, let me. Let, let. <laughs> I'm only joking, by the way. There is a difference. There is. But this is the problem, you see, because metaphysics, the lenses, in uh, the lenses that you put on your eyes in order to see and understand the world, those first principles are very important in this discussion. Because if your metaphysics, if your first principles are that consciousness can be reduced to in some way to physical processes, then eventually, if we have an AI machine that can, well, that seems to be just like us, then how can we differentiate between that robot or that machine and a human being? I just wanted you to say Siri is weak AI and strong AI. No, you didn't. You want me to be an artificial intelligence in this program. This is one of your conspiracies. Shh, shh, shh. So, and strong AI is Told you. a software that writes itself at super speeds. He wants me to be yeah. an artificial <laughs> intelligence on this podcast. You. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. In this book, um, Life 3.0, the author says, whether we like it or not, whether we agree or disagree, AI is well on its way. Okay, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, what's the evidence for this? Uh, how do we see this around us? Well, uh, according to the Guardian, tech companies uh, have spent up to 30 billion on AI research. Wow. 
this is in 2016 competition is increasing that com- uh, that countries that feel they're left behind like France mm. they're increasing their budget in fact they've got a budget of 1.8 billion wow. to compete with the industry leaders like US and China this was um, by Reuters March 2018 then if you look generally even in the UK the country that we're living in there's currently 250 AI companies in the UK wow it's just the UK, yep. according to the Guardian. This is a general overview of what we're what we're dealing with. If we look at certain industry experts or scientists that people love quoting, let's bring out a few. Stephen Hawking. He said, and I quote, "I think the development of full AI could spell the end of the human race." Wow. BBC News. Five things you may not know. Elon Musk in his YouTube interviews. There's two main quotes, other than what we showed at the yes. start. He says, it's the biggest risk as we face as a civilization. And he says, we're summoning the demon. <laughs> it's like he's, he's someone with a pentagram, you know, summoning the demon, but you know, they don't really know what's going to happen after yeah, that. Yeah, because there's no regulation. One of the founders of Google's DeepMind, and they're the ones that produced AlphaGo and AlphaGo Zero. Mustafa Suleiman is a Muslim, I think. And he said, I'm not by default optimistic Mm, mm. about AI. And this was in his Guardian interview on tech intelligence. Bill Gates says it will not necessarily share the same goals as us. Marshall Brain says humans will become as irrelevant as cockroaches. The example that they give is why do we treat ants inferior to us? Because we think that they lack the intelligence, they lack the capability that we do. Therefore, their lives have now, have now become insignificant. Even if they kill, they have no rights. Mm-mm. Anyone can squash them wherever. No one really cares. Now, Ray Kurzweil, he's written a book called The um, Singularity. And he predicts around, the, around 2045, the world will experience a singularity. This goes in accordance with what you're saying, which is artificial general intelligence. Um, That's when machines do start making decisions for themselves. Yes. So that's regarded as a singularity. And Ray Kurzweil, again, he's a futurist and the director of engineering in Google. He said this in 2005. Wow. This was a long time ago. Let's, Let's start with unemployment. Yeah, that's that's literally what drives us as human beings. Yeah, employment, money. Now, William Henry, uh, an author, he says 90% of humans will be jobless. The 90? 90. He wow. goes very high. A Korea Employment Information Service, they say 50 to 70% depending on the industry. Well, this also depends what kind of ethics we have. Yeah. Because there could be regulations. So, for example, even in the... And where, where we live, in, in the UK, and in America, and in Europe, and in many parts of the world, you have um, competition right, uh, competition uh, regulation, isn't it? Like, I, I, I don't know much about business, but I know that, that there are laws and regulations in place to promote good trade and stuff like that. So, you know, would would we... Using the word control, though. Yeah, but would we be in a position where... We can control them. No, what I'm saying is... Is it true that 90% of humans will, will be jobless? That is only based on the assumption that we won't have any regulations in place. But you're saying it like we can actually control them. But once the singularity... Oh, you mean once AI is in place yeah, yeah, and they become the boss? If they Oh, yeah, absolutely. Killer robots. This sounds like something from Terminator, iRobot. New York Times, 25th October 2016. Headline, robots that could kill on their own. Um, and this was an experiment that was done by American's defense agency where they t- bought a, a drone from Amazon and they just gave it their own software and it was able to recognize us- using the technology of facial recognition, armed people, non-armed people. And again, this capability was there. This is just from a software. Wow. And this is from what exists now. Business Insider, March 2016. Microsoft's genocidal AI chat box broken again. 
it was saying anti-Semitic things and calling for denying the Holocaust and it was making some real absurd. No way. Yeah, it just started going crazy. Uh, independent July 2017, Facebook's artificial intelligence robots shuts down after they start talking to each other in their own language. What? At first. No way. Yeah, Are you at, serious? At first, they assumed that it was just gibberish. But then they were speaking in a language that the humans didn't know. They had to immediately shut it down. And then the independence has also said as well that this is a more common occurrence than you and I would actually think. But they just don't tell us that. For example, there's this whistle whistleblower. The video is going viral on Instagram and YouTube as well. Again, it's not verified, but uh, people are trusting it where... It said that 29 people have been killed due to killer robots in either South Korea or Japan. But again, they can't release this information because it's going to cause widespread panic. Wow. Guardian April 2018, killer robots, pressure builds for ban as governments meet. Now that sounds what you were saying about regulating. <laughs> but then countries spend billions as UN debates regulation. It's already well on its way. Yes. Countries cannot stop doing it because the US and China are leading the industry. They're yeah, leaders. And because there's not much regulation, yeah. they're just continuing as they are they until wanna... regulation comes into place. But it might affect the economy to such a degree that the regulation won't be proper regulation. It will be regulation that's basically just caught up to what's happening now and they're like well if we regulate it too much we're not gonna make the money that we need because it's giving us money lobbying in return groups, yeah. so it'd be lobbying group and all of those things so mm. I, I think i was listening to a radio bbc radio 4 program this was like two years ago i think and they were talking about ai rights will we need in the future to discuss about artificial intelligent intelligence rights no that's very interesting yeah so business insider 2018 uh, June said scientists create murder obsessed psychopath AI and it learned everything from Reddit. Oh dear. So the point here what is. What does it say about Reddit? What does it say about people that are actually uh, creating these things just to see what happens? Because you can create something, but if you can't control it and then it starts wreaking havoc, I mean, you definitely need. Why didn't they create. I don't know. A an AI that was obsessed with spreading peace and love. That's not fashion fashionable now. It's all about killing people in the most imaginative and creative way possible. Oh dear. Now let's move on to military usage. When the military gets involved, as it always does, there's there's problems. Things get turned into weapons, and we all suffer. Let's look at Guardian, August 2017. Elon Musk leads 116 experts calling for outright ban of killer robots. And the one of the co-founders of DeepMind, Mustafa, is also one of them as well. Mm. April 2018, Guardian, killer robots. AI experts called for boycott over lab in South Korea University. So they were making killer robots. In the country that we're living in, the UK, they've created an aircraft called Taranis. The reason what makes it so remarkable is, is it's supersonic, self-manned, undetectable by radar, um, and... It is actually given the responsibility to think and decide targets for itself. No. Yeah. This was in um, BT November 2017 that it's allowed to do this. Now, they are obviously telling us no, but we get the final say. But it's pretty much over 90% is its self thought or whatever you whatever word you want to to say telegraph february 2014 successful flight for taranis stealth drone most advanced aircraft ever built by british engineers so again this is in the country that we're in yeah you've got people that are creating stuff like this now imagine the question now arises if you arm it no but we're not arming it though it's just there to spy why is bae systems involved in mm -hmm. why is the arms company involved now Let's go on to morality. Sure. Yeah? Here's where things now get interesting. Michao Kaku, the co-founder of the string theory, um, very much quoted futurist as well. He said biology will be reduced to computer science. He said this in a big think video called genetics key to immortality. Um, and again, Brian Reese, the CEO of Giga Om, 
um, he says in his books, uh, in, in his book, it depends on how you see humans. So yeah, absolutely. Number one, if you see them as machines, chemical reactions and fuel. Yep. Or if you see them as animals, which just lack the human touch and are lifeless. Or number three, if you see them as humans, if you see humans as humanoids capable of consciousness and, you know, having a soul. Yes. So your interpretation of AI and what they're capable of and their dangers will depend on what category you put human beings in. And that then leads us to the question and the definition of defining wisdom and intelligence. Well, yes, well, Let's, you're, you're right. So if you see yeah. the human being using the lenses of physicalism, which is a kind of metaphysic first principle philosophy on understanding the mind consciousness and this is where a lot of elites and a lot of these people that are well we live in a physicalist world yeah academia is based on generally speaking they are physicalists especially in the philosophy of the mind what the problem is is how you view the human being because if you do view the human being and human consciousness as just reducible to bits of matter which is a materialistic philosophy or can be reduced to physical processes but not necessarily bits of matter which is more physicalism but in the philosophy of the mind that these terms are used interchangeably mm. if you see the human being in that way then when you have an ai that can seemingly be conscious then what difference is there between the human being and ai according to the physicalist you already have a philosophical metaphysical spiritual what they would call an assumption yeah. that there is a difference between a human being and a robot. But if you are a physicalist and you think, mm. no, we are just computerized functional models, if you like. Yeah. Yeah? There is a relationship between inputs, mental states and outputs. That's what the human being is. That's what consciousness is. So if you can have a robot that does exactly the same stuff and expresses that they have some kind of subjective experience as well, then there may come a time that there'll be no difference between me and an AI or you and an AI. Mm. Just like the film Her, right? Don't watch it, guys. They're going to watch it. Now, but guys. they're going to watch it. Yes, yeah, oh. sorry. But anyway, the point is that this guy falls in love with an operating system. An operating look, system. There's uh, kids watching and stuff. Can you just keep it? Oh, you work out. Huh? <laughs> 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 so this guy falls in love with an operating system and then he gets a bit confused because they're in love and they seemingly have some kind of relationship. So you you watched this film, yeah? So so did you. <laughs> so did you. That was off camera conversation. I watched it on a plane. I watched it on a plane. Okay. Which is not Anyway, that the point is okay. anyway, the film is the point is the operating system responds to his question because he gets a bit confused and she says well, fundamentally, there is no difference between me and you. We're made out of the same stuff. We're mm. just electrons whizzing around, mm. right? That's a physicalist understanding of humanity and the human self and consciousness. And this is very important. So one way of addressing this is distinguishing between strong AI and weak AI. So strong AI is a robot, a machine that has consciousness like ourselves. They have self-awareness, okay? Weak AI is basically like Siri. Siri? That's just oh, it's not working. <laughs> Siri? No, it doesn't recognize me anymore. <laughs> but you see, that's how, that's how weak AI is. It proves my point. So weak AI is like Siri or your calculator, your computer at the moment, stuff like that, right? Because your it doesn't driving car. Yeah, because Google it doesn't it doesn't have the it doesn't have inner subjective conscious states. Yeah. It doesn't have what you call wisdom mm. and, and stuff like that. So there is a difference between between strong AI and weak AI. But you could fundamentally talk about the difference in this way. One has understanding, which is the strong AI. Human beings we have understanding. We can attach meaning to symbols. But weak AI doesn't have understanding. It can just manipulate symbols, but cannot attach meaning to the symbols. And there's a brilliant thought experiment by Professor John Sell called the Chinese Room Experiment that basically elucidates this for us. Shall we talk about the Chinese Room Experiment, sir? Yay! <laughs> 
<laughs> He's only laughing because you've done this before and he was very bored. But I think it's very important to go through. Yeah. And you've made reference to it in your introduction anyway. Let's go. Let's start this room experiment. <laughs> yeah. So the, Chinese, so, <laughs> so the Chinese room experiment is you have someone in a room. In the room, there is a rule book. It's in English. And the English rule book tells you how to manipulate Chinese characters, Chinese symbols, right? Someone outside of the room is passing through questions in Chinese. So the person looks at the Chinese characters and symbols, goes to the rule book, and he says, all right, I've got this symbol and that symbol, that Chinese character and this Chinese character. And when I get this, the rule book is telling me to get these Chinese symbols. So when it gets the answers, the correct Chinese symbols, it passes it outside of the room. There are other people there or other Chinese speakers, whatever the case may be. And they realize that the person in the room is always answering the questions correctly. So from an outsider point of view, when you're looking at what's happening in the room and the person is producing the right answers, you think the person in the room knows Chinese. But he doesn't. All the person has done is has they have read the rule book that's in English that teaches them when you see these squiggly bits, when you see these Chinese characters, you need to now produce these Chinese characters. And then you happen to answer all the Chinese questions correctly, but you don't understand Chinese. It's just a manipulation of the syntax, manipulation of the symbols. So what this experiment shows us is that computers are very similar to Chinese room experiment, that they just have syntactical arrangements. They know how to manipulate the symbols, but there is no way of attaching meaning to the symbols. But human understanding and consciousness, not only can we manipulate symbols as, as, as like you did, but we can attach meaning to the symbols. But computers are just about syntax, rearrangement of symbols, not semantics, not meaning. And the response that people say is, if you cannot trust AI, and this is where majority of the schools of thoughts are kind of converging, which is now... Right, the Hanifi school and the, and the, the Hanbali school. Behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the, the we may have a fic of AI, bro. Probably, Honestly. Bro. A lot of them are converging and agreeing upon this uh, idea of combining AI with humans to form cyborgs. Oh now, my days. Now this is where it gets interesting. But where are these cyborgs, bro? That's what Elon this Musk is. This is my phone. Doing. This, this is my phone. It's an extension of my consciousness. Yeah. Your memory is no longer here anymore. Sometimes we just write things down. Exactly. This is like an extension of me. But here's where it becomes interesting because they use that now to because you can't. In, it's very difficult due to cognitive dissonance to introduce something brand new. They have to uh, either make it as something that's already there and they're building on it, so it's not a new idea, or it's something that you know a person feels they need hmm. so this is a very important principle for them to forward this concept of the cyborgs for example you mentioned the phone but we've also got other implants like pacemakers we've got well, um yeah, cochlear right. a cochlear implants retinal implants in fact they're saying around the um around the year of 2030 your body will be more non your, your body will be no, more non-biological than biological. Again, Ray Kurzweil, uh, he's, he's predicted this. Um, uh, Michel Kaku's estimates by 2045, in fact, will be a growing um, human organs. In fact, we'll have a human body shop. What's How does that relate to AI though? What's I very mean, you interesting. Could grow, you could grow another ear maybe. I mean, they, they even did it on a mouse. They, they, they did. grew an, an ear on a mouse. But what's, what's very interesting is the principle that's being put across and the principle that's being sold to us is efficiency and health. Yeah, everybody wants their health to be improved. Everybody wants efficiency as a human being. So when you want efficiency and health, then seeds are being planted to use robotics to achieve that. And that's where this whole no notion of cyborgs becomes more easier to digest. Because what's interesting in, uh, is in the Express March 2017, it says AI will be smarter than humans the, by 20... The, the Express. Pardon? The, the Express. The, you actually yeah. quoted The Express. I'm quoting... Now, I'm just trying to say... Refute this guy. <laughs> He's I'm, quoting The Express. I'm, yeah. it's, it's there 
in mainstream yeah. mainstream media. Yeah, sure, sure. So they they're saying um, it's being popularized now. Yeah, AI will be smarter than humans by 2029 before we merge with with machine. Google chief says. Now Google is a company that even Elon Musk says, you know what? I'm I'm scared of these guys, and you're gonna know why. CNN, Kaku Michao Kaku, he says Brainnet is to replace the internet. Elon Musk, he's uh, working on something called a Neuralink, which is the brain internet. So far, I don't see this as a problem, the cyborg issue, because we're only assuming it will become an issue if the computer system or the robotics that we integrate into our biology has a form of consciousness. No, it's it's only going to be equivalent of, in my view, and I may be wrong, of instead of having this phone outside here, which is like an extension of some parts of my consciousness, like my memory, I, if I want to remember something, I'll write it down. Yeah. Instead of it being in my hand, it will just be in my brain. It's not adding to me as a human being, or a con- it's, it doesn't, it's not changing my consciousness. It's just a tool. But that's the thing, the technology they're working on is not as simple as that now. What, what do you mean? Give me some examples. The Verge, Feb 2013, scientists link rat brains together over the internet to transfer sensory information. So now information is becoming such that it can be moved around. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Telegraph, July 2013. It's like having a dream. How is that a problem? Okay, Telegraph, July 2013. You're not answering my question. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question. If uh, the information is being transferred, mm-hmm. now that means it's not in your brain like we think today oh they can't reach inside our heads it's now something that can be downloaded and uploaded and moved around and even implanted now if it can be downloaded oh, interesting. And, in, and now it can be moved around what is interesting is now it can be siphoned off it can be changed in fact now we move on to the Mandela effect as well that people think they have believed something but when then they look again they're like oh crap did was it really deja vu? Because now you're playing with the minds of people. And we do know that the people in control, in power, they've been known to do this. And mm. there's enough evidence and we'll discuss this evidence. In fact, well, do you, they have to do it? They've already done it. They've got alcohol now and drugs. They've already and, done it. In yeah. fact, with surveillance and NSA and um, Edward Snowden, it gets the rabbit hole gets much more deeper. But the, the problem is that but when... The problem is, don't worry, Allah is in control. Uh, he is, he is, but it's important for us to understand the extent to which to which this is going and if we have any say in this, we should be very vocal and we should know what we are saying and we have evidence backing us as well, rather than just those kooks, those conspiracy guys that are just on the corner, just, uh, you know, with their hippie clothes and just with band. I'm talking about the actual memory. That I have to see the evidence for that, that though. Downloaded and uploaded. Now, Where's the evidence apart te- from the express? Okay, Telegraph, July 2013. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let me finish. Finish. False false memory implants of mice make total recall a reality. Also, big think. Uh, Michao Kaku also discussed this in June 2016. The Guardian also said this in March 2015. Yeah, and uh, independent again, May 2017. Scientists carry out full uh, head transplant of rats. Again, the the scientist he said this last year that he planned to do a human head transplant by the end of the year. There's a whole big debate, but the point that I'm trying to say is it, it's get the rabbit hole is Fine. getting very it, it, deep. It is, it is. But the thing is, you are not your, you are you are not your memories. So it's about personhood. Are you defined okay, okay. by your memories? We, we, we are not our memories. If today, Hamza, you come to my house and I say, "Who are you?" So I, I don't know. No, no, no. Okay, your your family. Do you, okay, do you if re- you if you do you forget, remember your whole if you part? have if you have yeah. amnesia? Yeah. Can you argue that you are still Hamza? Okay, memories may be a necessary... Some memories may be a necessary aspect of your identity, but they're not a sufficient. So if so that if, now memory... So for, uh, here's the proof. Yeah. Do you remember everything in the past? No. There you go. That's yeah. the point. So, especially me, <laughs> if I forget very... If it's not entirely significant... You know, every moment is a new moment for me, right? So you become someone else. There's a new realm of possibility, right? Yeah. Years Agreed. Ago. So see you can't point. say yeah, your yeah. memories are a necessary and sufficient condition for personhood and identity. Some of them. Yes, agreed. But there's still a debate there. So the point is, the point just here, because you could, you could, you could, you could gain someone else's memories, and it's in your brain. Well, how would you have them in your brain? As if they're yours? 
would you have an awareness that those memories are actually yours? I don't think so, because for, the, for it to be actually a transfer of other people's memories, you would have to think, well, I have these memories, but I know they're not mine. That's no different than reading a autobiography. No, but that's what they did with rats. They were able to take memories out and put memories in where rats thought they had done something when in reality they had Okay, that's different. So if the rat thought yeah. they did it and yeah. it was them... That's what I'm saying. Look, well, false, memory, false memory false memory. That's very interesting. I, I'll have to read the original academic yeah, yeah, uh, read it. paper. Read it. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Now, if this is happening where memories can be taken. Now, this, this is where it's, it's getting interesting now because now this is how they're saying that you could, in essence, live forever through a machine. That your memories are downloaded and put no, into a machine. But that's only, again, if you think that you, your identity, your person yeah. is just a accumulation of a bunch of memories. Agreed. This is where, again, you need to debate using philosophy and debate well, the pros no, and cons. This is a basic point. Are you just your memories? And I don't well, think some people would in, say in, yes. some, memory, some memories may be a necessary uh, feature of your identity, but it's not sufficient. For us as Muslims, obviously, we believe in a soul. We believe well, forget as Muslims, yeah. just, just normally, just as conceptually, if you're just a bunch of memories, yeah. then... Some you're, memories you're, you're someone different every day then Because you remember certain things And you don't remember other That's things what you, Some I mean, things are working on the Say sub, you're evolving Some things are working on the subconscious level I mean this is spooky stuff man spooky. So you're changing every day in essence That's what you're saying And that is possible What's wrong with that? We are changing every day We're becoming different people No I agree I agree So well that's the whole debate in philosophy About what is a person And what Who are you? <laughs> exactly. Who, are who you? am I? Yeah. Who am I? But yeah so that, that was, That's very interesting but the thing is that the people that are using this technology and making technological advances, they don't follow this opinion. They follow the opinion that you are your thoughts. Your thoughts can be transferred and again can be moved from person to person. In fact, you can be taught certain things by literally downloading them. That's what we're interested in. Yeah, but I don't have a problem with that really. Think about it logically. When you're in a classroom and a teacher is teaching you something, it's their thoughts that are being transferred into your brain and you download them yourself in some way. Yeah, but Hamza, It's just but, the medium has changed. Yeah, you're but, not in a classroom, someone just poked your head with a probe and now you know. The thing is, there's but still the problem, this, the there's problem still this unified is, conscious entity that is understanding those thoughts. But the problem is that yeah. if if... That if thoughts can be plugged into your brain yeah, Then you're in trouble because you don't have control over that So one would argue exactly. well at least I can control what I'm learning You can be abducted and yes. people can plug things into your mind take Maybe it's stuff happening out. already Maybe you've ad abducted me here bro for the past few hours it's, It happens <laughs> but it's more difficult yeah. Like uh, people have to willingly go to experiments or they have to be abducted It's done over days Again, this is something that obviously governments want control That's something that's not really denied In order to even... Uh, even make this a reality that you're able to produce computers with such processing power you have to go further in technology now we the basic computing knowledge is binary yes yeah? that that's to, a, a transfer of the most simplest bit of information is in ones and zeros yes absolutely now there is something that's called a not a bit but a qubit which is using quantum physics mm -hmm. And quantum mechanics where it's not one and zero, the it could actually be a one and a zero. Yes, at the same time. At the same time. And this is called this is playing on the quantum theory of quantum entanglement. Yes. So when it's quantumly entangled, now there are significantly more possibilities. Now, if there's more possibilities, that computer that's following um, qu uh, quantum computing, you're increasing your your processing power and you can literally do billions of calculations. Yes, absolutely. But in terms of now signals, how do you transfer this? Well, you need 5G instead of 4G. It's coming. No, it's here. It is here, but it's not popularized yet. But it's being rolled out. In fact, it was being, um, it happened, it, it was rolled out by Gates Head Council. And there was someone called Mark Steele who was advocating against this. And his thing was, you know, pushed aside as pseudoscience. The council was ignoring it. The case went to court and this was a landmark victory. It took place, if I'm not mistaken, last year. What was his, this year. What was his uh, contention? He was saying stuff like, there's evidences of birds falling. 
mysteriously in areas of 5G. You've got increased rates of cancer, um, EMF, a lower life quality. But again, you can look into this, but he won in court. There's p capability of councils like Westminster that they have on their smart lampposts. They've got 4G, you just need to add one more part and it can roll. You can easily, there's potential for 5G. But now the thing is not that many people know about it. It's there. In fact, there's even evidence, strong evidence to suggest EMF radiation is dangerous for us. Yeah, no, of course. But now 5G is enough that there's mysterious birds falling, people falling ill. This is, you know, our bodies cannot handle that much radiation to such a degree that even the CPU of a computer needs to be encapsulated uh, within a certain um, container such that it doesn't interfere with other computers. Yes, agreed. So now uh, we need EMF blockers, whether it's, whether it's even uh, on our phones, whether it's e even on our laptop devices, even on us, like EMF pendants, you can use sugarite, organite. These are naturally occurring rocks that can protect you from radiation. Because human beings, we're not used to being uh, or receiving that much radiation. And yeah. if you look now 5G... But this is the problem when you have a motivation of efficiency, making money, greed. You don't care? Of course you don't care. That's why we need ethical filters for our progress. Because what they've done now, and you see this a lot even in political discourse, that progress has become an ethic in itself. It's a virtue in itself. Progress is not a virtue in itself. Progress is instrumental. It's an instrument. It's a means to an end. Now, if you think the end is just progress, then we have a huge problem. Because progress at what expense? Progress at the expense of humanity, what makes us human, you know, our relationships, things that we believe to be transcendent, meaning they're not based on your limited mind and emotions, they're objective, you know, we're more real, many human beings are more realists. We believe, maybe not all morals, but there are some morals that transcend consensus. They transcend the limited mind and human emotions. And if we walk down this very, this path of the unknown, or this immoral path, mm. and we don't have these ethical filters, then Allah knows what's going to happen. Quantum computing has its roots in up to 19, uh, I think about 1970s, 1960s. Now, if this is what's publicly known, the army and the governments are normally 20, 30 years ahead, minimum. Yeah. Now, what's interesting here is the biggest kind of initiative in this is, is something called D-Wave. D-Wave uh, quantum computer. Okay. Now this is uh, a, com uh, a combined initiative by NASA, by Google, by USRA and by Lockheed Martin as well. So you have loads of interests coming together and D-Wave is leading all of the com quantum computing technology at this moment in time. But let's see how how these guys refer to it. So Jordi Rose, the CEO, he says, and I quote, they're gonna be aliens and they're gonna be way smarter than every single person in the room. Now he said this in a lecture to students in Vancouver, British Columbia. Eric Ledinsky, the co-founder at D-Wave, he said, quantum computers allow us to access hidden features of nature, new dimensions. He used this word, new dimensions and if if we access these sorts of hidden dimensions at scale, we could have unimaginable computing power. He said this in a collision conference in May 2015. China is also one of the leaders in uh, quantum computing too. Um, BBC July 2017, China to launch unhackable internet. So they, <laughs> launched, they launched a satellite. It was quite interesting because they're accused of most of the hacking, right? So. They, they are. So they launched a, a satellite in, in which they were able to test um, quantum communication. When you're accessing different dimensions and you have no idea because you don't believe in this stuff. Yes. Um, we know that other dimensions harbor, you know, very strange beings like the jinn that have, you know, a, a lot of power. Now, when you're dealing with the jinn, which a lot of this, now a lot of these people, when you speak to them, and Hamza Yusuf mentions this as well, yeah. that 
when you when you speak to these the people, Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons, he was an occultist, but when you speak to other people, but he developed the rocket, didn't he? He did with the with. And he, he had a dream about the Dajjal. About about the Dajjal as well. Yeah. But these people do liken technology to magic. Well, it becomes indistinguishable. Exactly. You know, are you going to say that there are no other dimensions? Well, I don't know. It depends what you define as a dimension. But if you see the dream world as an example of another dimension, well, there you go. There is other dimensions going on. Mm. And look, we don't know much about the brain as well. I mean, this is all we based don't. on the assumption that we know everything about the brain. We don't. We, we actually know relatively little about the brain. I mean, we've advanced a lot as a human species, but there's so much more to it than we can imagine. Because I'm pursuing a PhD in the philosophy of the mind. Mashallah. No, it's not a big deal. It's all rubbish. And um, Look at you, Hamza. <laughs> I, I just said it's all rubbish. It is literally all rubbish. Because what you realize is, it's just humbling. You just realize, I don't know anything. Like in, in some of our research seminars. <laughs> You're trying to be humble, man. <laughs> I'm not trying to be humble. I'm trying to show to you, it is literally humbling. Look at my man, Hamza. Yo. Because we don't know anything. My man doing a PhD, Marshall. He's not pursuing, even pursuing. I might not even do it. Finish pursue it. is just a Who fancy knows? word for doing, isn't it? Listen, Habibi, the point is. You're smashing him, Marshall. No, I'm not. <laughs> Okay, forget the PhD thing. When I did my MA, when I was Wait, doing my... Wait, <laughs> MA start from mashallah. I thought this podcast was to be a little bit more serious than Smile to Jannah stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> Listen nah. to me, Habibi, look. Yeah, yeah, sorry. When I, when I was doing the MA... and Wait, my... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Serious. <laughs> serious. So, when we're reading some journals and papers, and... You know, you're like, wow, that's a very powerful argument. Then you became convinced. Then when you were told to read the other paper that was addressing this one, and it was like dealing with the, responding to the argument, like, oh my yeah. God, I don't know much. Mm. You just realize. And this reminds me of what Al-Ghazali said, the 11th century theologian. Rahimahullah. And, yeah, Rahimahullah. And polymath. Can you not break my equipment, yeah, yeah. please? He basically said that if you think your iman, your faith, your spiritual and intellectual Conviction is going to come from a deductive argument alone. I think he even said this was a bit ah, this is like almost an innovation because someone smarter than you can just play around with your premises mm. and then what are you going to do? You're finished. So he said, in order to have that iman, is that you need to experience the Quran and the Sunnah in your life as well, which is a very important point because. You're never going to know everything. And all of this stuff that we're talking about, for me, just reminds me of who Allah is. He's Al-Hakim. He's Al-Alim. Allah is the wise. He is the knowing. Allah has the totality of wisdom and knowledge. Allah has the picture. We just have a pixel. And for me, you know, all of this stuff just reminds me of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you it's know, true and it should. Yeah, it, because that, where did we get this information? This. But the li- reason I'm mentioning this is because when people listen to stuff like this, they think, oh my God, what does Islam say? You know what? You may not have an Islamic answer for this. The point I'm trying to say is, who cares? You're not always going to get an answer for things, right? Mm. You know, Allah doesn't give you answer for everything all the time in the Quran. Sometimes Allah just gives you questions and doesn't give you a direct answer. When Allah says, for example, in chapter 52, verse 35 to 36, Did you create yourself? Did you come from nothing? Did you create the heavens and the earth? Indeed, you have no firm certainty. Allah won't really give you a direct, explicit answer, but He's teaching us how to think. And that's the point. So if, you, if you're a person who's able to think in the right way and you have sincerity, it will, it will inevitably lead you, lead you to the right answers. Also, if you have the correct spiritual and ethical lenses on, when you, when you have this information coming to you, it wouldn't affect you. It, actually, it would actually increase your iman. Why is it someone who goes to a seminar class in postgrad in philosophy and the whole class confuses them intellectually but increases them spiritually? But for someone else, it will confuse them intellectually and it will confuse them spiritually. Why? Mm. It's because they don't have the right ethical spiritual filters or the relationship with Allah properly. And, you know, they haven't asked and, and, and the right questions or learned how to think properly. So the point is, this whole discussion um, has, just, just has, has reminded me of who Allah is. He is the one in control. He has a totality of wisdom and knowledge. And there are some things that we may never ever know And things are going to mm. be even more spooky <clears throat> in the future bro And you know what? I'm going to spook you out even more now 
That's what I'm gonna do. What happened? Now this is uh, <laughs> let's discuss some of the stuff that will now and this is where it does slightly get worrying as to the capabilities that are actually being developed and just to kind of contextualize things and just to kind of put us in the real world rather than thinking now nah, this is uh, gonna happen this can happen in our lifetime and in the lifetime of our kids okay and we may not have the chance to sit down and research this sort of stuff until it finally happens and then we're like oh crap what do i do now yes yeah so you've got something called nanotube we've got silicon chips here mm. now silicon chips aren't very efficient they leak a lot of uh, electricity and they're not very efficient mm -hmm. so they're developing something that's made from carbon called nanotubes which are a hundred times faster than regular with something with the nanotubes hundred hundred times faster than a regular PC now of course you've got um, 3d chips as well so which is rather than one layer of transistors you've got many layers again this is discussed all of this is dis uh, discussed by Ray Kurzweil in the his singularity book then you've got DNA computing now, DNA computing is where your DNA is used to store information. Now, one centimeter of DNA can store up to one trillion CDs. So DNA computing is using your DNA to store information. Now, again, in 2002, an Israeli scientist by Ehud Shapiro, he developed a DNA based computer, which was 100 thousand times faster than a regular PC. Interesting. Um, then you've got again Ray Kurzweil, he goes in a bit more detail. Um, he talks about feeding nanobots, that nanobots will be injected into your body um, and they will actually go to certain cells, correct them. So they, they, they will be swimming in your body. They'll go to certain cells, remove diseases. So well, that's in. a good thing, I guess. Good things, but let's... let's it could be misused. Exactly. Feeding nanobots will deliver nutrients to every cell. Now, what they're saying is you're not going to need a digestive tract. You're not going to need uh, kidneys. So again, your organs are slowly uh, going to be taken over by these nanobots. Well, this could be a good thing if you have kidney failure, then... This could replace this. It. This could be a good thing, of course. Now, there's uh, another type of nanobots called foglets. Now, foglets can assume any form in the sense that you can look a certain way one day and you can change and look like someone totally different another day. Shape, shape shifting. Shape shifting. But there's a scene that comes to my mind. It's in Transformers where the I robots. Yeah, they, there's loads of tiny different. Uh, robots that come together and form a woman to entice the main lead oh, character. Oh wow! And then when he when he knows that she's a robot, then obviously you see the robot kind of come out. In two thousand and three, the Max Planck Institute created a neurochip. Now neurochips can be planted into the head, and you can literally steer the car with your thoughts. Yeah, they've done that for people who are paraplegic, I believe, or they can't. They can only move their eyes or their head, and they basically put kind of probes in their brain and they could turn off the light just by thinking. By thinking. Yeah, they've done that. So again, which just, is a good thing. Which, could be which used is for a good. good thing. And this is why we're talking about ethical filters. Yeah. This is why we need the correct ethic ethical in my in in my view the first the the correct metaphysical filters in order to move forward. Because if you see the human being fundamentally as just something physical, then in the future you're gonna end up in a disaster because if the AIs are something physical and it seems to be like a human being, then there'll be no difference. But if you have the different starting point, different lenses that you put in your eyes to understand reality like human beings are different by virtue of the fact that they're human and they have a soul and that's a d that then you won't have that deadly outcome similarly with using this technology you could use it for good you could use it for bad just like a knife bro a no, knife you can cut someone as a surgeon and you perform can. life saving uh, operations or you can murder that's, someone that's that's a very optimistic um view and I, and I'll tell you why because these uh, knife is in your control it's in your hand and you can use it, you make the choice. Now the problem is when artificial intelligence is being created by people who, let's face it, cannot be trusted morally. Yeah, but that's my point. So if they yeah. were trusted more and they had the then correct they metaphysical could, yeah. and ethical filters, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah, because, but obviously at the moment... Because the problem with nanobots is nanobots, again, there's there's things that can go wrong. They can be, uh, you can induce a virus into them. They can replicate because you need self-replicating nanobots. Mm. Now. That's what cancer is, is self-replicating cells. But the question here, therefore, is it has the human project failed? 
are we as a species are we have we reached a certain ethical level and 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 do we have the correct understanding of who we are as human beings in order for us to be responsible enough no. to deal with this technology no that is where us muslims We're have more... a role to play yeah. Yeah. where we need to start to teach people the correct meta- metaphysical lenses to understand ourselves in a exactly. comprehensive way and to provide that ethical framework and that's why we have a responsibility yeah. bro it's not just saying oh look all this stuff Yes, this is great. Kind it can be is. great and positive. It can be great and positive, but we need the correct metaphysical and ethical lenses and filters in order to use this properly. 100% right, because we, our morals come from the Quran, come from the Sunnah. But there's another very, sorry for interrupting, there's another very important thing. This whole thing just makes you want to worship Allah more. Why? Because if human beings can eventually do this amazing stuff, then and this is not an analogy, but by greater reason, imagine the knowledge and wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who deserves praise, which is a form of worship? But, but that's what I'm saying. Imagine if this is what we're able to do in the physical world. Imagine if we spent half of this time in the spiritual world. Imagine the spiritual highs that we can achieve. Because we're able to look into these sorts of things and we're able to make machines that can think for themselves. And spiritually, we still can't focus on our salah. SubhanAllah. Imagine if we gave more time and more creative thought to this. Mm. But the point here is that privacy has now become a thing of the past and the, the most cringiest argument people give is, well, if you've got nothing to hide, then you don't have to worry. Well, if that's the case, give me all of your passwords and let me come in and just watch your interactions with your family. But it's not, it's not, it's not even about that. Because people, that's a, see, that's a wrong assumption. Because you're assuming that... that, that it's okay for your privacy to be invaded because you're moral, you're not doing anything wrong. Mm. That's not the point. The point is, the information that they'll get from your living, they will use it against you to promote their own agenda, yeah. which is to sell something to you Mashallah, or to yeah. make you think in a particular way. So it's mm. not just about, oh, you're not doing anything wrong, mate. It's not about that. In fact, even Edward Snowden, he worked for, um, was it? NSA, the NSA. And there's a movie on him, there's a documentary yes. on him. In fact, he's now not allowed. In fact, the USA is literally after him because he released state secrets of the fact that they spy on their population. In fact, there's a few uh, computer programs or um, yeah, that, that are well known. You've got XKS, which is the information sharing of global data by New Zealand, Australia, Japan, Germany, UK, Canada. You've got PRISM which was in his movie as well. Um, US, the way it's, they're able to track uh, internet. You've got uh, DCSnet, that's used by the FBI for phones. Dishfire is by um, messages, marking messages, looking at messages, shared information between yeah, it's UK. Ha- it's happening on a state level as well. UK and U- US, you've got Echelon, and New Zealand, Australia, UK, Canada, US, where they're sharing phone computer and bank accounts in fact it's gone to such a degree and the picture that i'm painting is the people that are held uh, responsible for ai and the moral standards that this is what's happening at this moment in time so imagine with the weak technology that's prevalent what they're able to do and imagine if they were responsible for more invasive and more technologically advanced equipment yes. what they would be capable of in fact china has a behavior uh, rating system in which their cctvs can literally face track people and it comes up with their basic data and they rate people according to how law-abiding they are again this is a very dangerous oh way of confirmation God. this has already been rolled out so this is not about oh conspiracy brother <laughs> brother, brother conspiracy brother so uh, again uh, UK, they've got a technology called Orovision Labs. Sweden, they are already putting chips in people. It's literally, um, it's, it's hair. They put a chip and you can enter the gym by using a chip. You can uh, buy stuff using the chip. So this is rolled out on, on um, pe- willing candidates. There's always willing candidates. Yeah, of course. Yeah? Just like cyborgs, you've got people that can't walk, they want this, and then eventually you go, you go to desperate people first. So Taser and Amazon, they're also working on facial recognition as well. In fact, the iPhone also has facial recognition. Un- you can unlock yeah, your phone. Course. And that data is stored by iPhone, and uh, it's well known that they share their data with 
uh, obviously the governments. Here is where we start going into the solutions. Elon Musk's solution is this, that considering the impending war with China, with Russia, um, this is America's impending war with Russia, with uh, China, with Iran, North Korea, etc., where we see uh, tensions rising. If a war was to take place, it would not be like the world wars of the past. It would be wars that are using nuclear weapons. And considering this impending war, Elon Musk is saying that if, if war does happen, everything gets destroyed, we fall into the Dark Ages again. Yes. And this has happened in the past. In fact, this is what archaeologists do. They find technology and they're like, oh, what happened in the past? But it's very much possible that civilization reached a peak in the past and then the Adab of Allah came and they were destroyed. But we assume based upon our limited observations and what we've dug up that, oh, they were primitive. But evidence That's has... That's true because in Egypt, for example, ancient Egypt, they had street lamps. They had batteries. But that sort of stuff isn't written in the textbooks. They, no, but seen it's, as... no, it's, 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 it's in academia. They say yeah. that it was quite an advanced society, but it's not popularized. That's the point. Because yeah. there is a difference between uh, what happens in academia sometimes and what's popularized. But if everything was to be destroyed and we were to fall in dark ages, he's saying that he and he's working towards and other people, moon bases and Mars bases, that certain colonies uh, survive there and there's uh, certain tech there such that they are able to come back, repopulate the planet and we will not have to wait that long to um, just reach to where we were again. There are people saying that, you know what, based upon the governments not wanting people to be that strong, Therefore, this superhuman cyborg experience won't be rolled out. If it is, it'll be severely controlled. It'll be limited. It'll be done to certain, you know, again, just like they do with everything else. It'll be restricted to more conformist type of thinkers and people. Just like if you are to publish a scientific article, it has to be done within a certain paradigm. If you are to reach that success or, or whatnot, if you don't conform to that, then you are so, you're just sidelined and you're just seen as an outcast. Mm. And that's what you live by. So governments don't like population growth. Uh, they don't like giving power to people or privacy. So it's naturally assumed that these things will not be as rosy or cozy as these futurists like Michao Kaku are, are promoting. More emphasis, like you said, needs to be made on what makes us human. And not only what makes us human, but the spiritual aspect of each daily activity rather than being stuck in a routine and this mechanistic behavior absolutely uh, thinking more and pondering more on the spiritual element to because internalize our tradition properly like exactly you know we have the concept of the inner dimensions interesting you would use the word dimensions inner dimensions of prayer of of of, of fasting of all of these spiritual practices that we have in accordance with the quran and the prophetic traditions the sunnah so it's in very that is extremely important to no, but I wanted to raise a point where you just mentioned there, which is they want to develop AI, artificial intelligence, with the assumption that they know they're gonna know how to do it and they're gonna know what that intelligence entails and they, they're gonna know what this robot entails. The thing is, have we understood who we are first? Mm. Yeah, have we explored ourselves? Do we actually know what it means to be a human being? That's the point. Now, if you haven't, then it's going to be very dangerous. So you're treading dangerous ground if you think now you're going to create other forms of intelligence and you somehow going to have control and you're going to understand, you know, all the potential outcomes. That's not true because you don't even understand who you are. Another thing that I would say as a solution is don't be too tech dependent because the only way they can sell you this stuff is if you are so into uh, ease they, they sell us a lot of things in the name of efficiency. Mm. And if we are constantly wanting to be more efficient, like there's robotic legs that you can, you won't even be tired and you can run great amount of distances. Again, oh, wow. work is being done on this. But the main solution for us should be conveying and articulating and sharing to humanity what does it mean to be a human being. Yeah. That's important because from the Islamic spiritual point of view, a human being is someone who acknowledges Allah, wants to worship, has an affinity to worship Allah, worships Allah, and has the correct ethical framework. That's a human being. So this is why we have this within our fitrah, 
an innate nature that has been created by Allah But it gets clouded because of greed and sins and all of these things So our job as Muslims is to compassionately and intelligently uncloud people's fitrah To awaken the truth within What's the truth within? To understand that they are a human being that has been born to worship Allah Which means to know Him, to love Him, to obey Him and to direct all acts of worship to Him alone and to follow his guidance that's what a human being is now if we share this with humanity inshallah hopefully they will be able to adopt this and they will have the correct ethical filter so we don't end up in this potential mess that's the solution as well bro your solutions are very practical which no, are very 100%. important but i think the key thing is we have to give people the correct ethical filters because we, it could it could be uh we could be in trouble and the problem is that if you don't look at yourself like a human being and focus on this element like you just said the thing is you're going to have robots that can potentially raise your kids you drive your cars serve your food um, but we already have robots that take care of the kids how many parents give the kids an ipad yeah, just to stay quiet for a few hours you know but that takes away the human touch yeah. and if the human touch is not there that then is proven to lead to depression is led to a lot of other psychological diseases and and problems now we're talking about all these advances but if our mind is not de- is, is not advancing as much the problem is all of this will be redundant bro because if we're not mentally we need to healthy, see- yeah, we need to see the stars again. Just take away technology for a while and you just get your human touch again, bro. When you see nature, you interact with nature, when you walk on the beach, you know. These are phenomenal things that change your 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 biorhythm, your DNA, your psychology, your state of being. So, you know, we just become just techno people. Yeah, Allah's created us in the best of forms. Now, we are able to run this fast or our legs can carry this much weight or this is the power because that's how much we deserve now of course we can have efficiency or whatnot there's nothing wrong with that but playing with the creation of Allah by thinking we can improve it or create now Allah's created us in his infinite wisdom now for us to think that we can replicate that and improve that in our limited minds we may think like children you know playing with uh, yeah, you know, well, the thing is, a quantum computer look, it's all ego man we have to realize that even if That's you were to yeah. To have a cyborg body and whatever the case may be and live another hundred years Again, we're not being cavemen saying, yeah, oh, yeah. don't do this But, but, the, yeah. but the point is, you're going to die anyway one day yeah. You know, sometimes there's this kind of hidden God complex or God yeah. replacement That we now want to become like the gods, right? Yeah. Which is which is this all ego I think that no matter how healthy you're going to be, you're going to die No matter how long you think you're going to live, you're still going to die and you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're going to be asked some questions. So the point is, you know, I don't think Allah is going to ask us if we basically uh, were able to create quantum computers. He's going to ask us, you know, did you hear the message? Did you connect with him? Did you have a relationship with him? Were you ethical? Um, so these are the important things that we need to have in our minds. So I would recommend people to have, um, you know, whether it's Shanghai or whether it's organite or pendants that you can protect yourself from EMF, radiation, eat healthy. Because when you're eating healthy, you're not going to need an organ transplant. Mm. Yeah. But when you're, t- when you're eating nonsense and garbage, yeah, and you're watching nonsense and garbage, you're more likely to be programmed through Hollywood thinking, oh, there, there is such thing. Oh, no, this is good for progress. This is good for this. When you rely on their moral standard. But again, eat healthy, live healthy, so you don't need all of this. And you know what? I do definitely, uh, you know, to understand why the Jal will not be going to villages, because it's we're talking about smart cities now, where everything can literally be locked down, and you're you're literally being tracked everywhere. Facial recognition, smart lamps, smart TV, smart curtains, and don't be reliant upon comfort and luxury. Because there may come a time where you will have to move to a village. Make your own fire, make your own, grow your own food. And you know what? It's not like ha ha ha, lol, lol, lol. It's actually, I actually see myself. I don't know, I don't have kids yet, inshallah, one day. But when they come, I don't know if I'm content with them living in a place like this where moral values come second and technological advance comes first. And technological advance by who? Mm. 
Bro, it's even to the extent that I wanted to write up my notes. You should. Rather than printing them out, because I, I notice I'm lazy even when it comes to spellings, and even when you write it down, it reinforces the point. Until next time, guys. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You gotta show your socks, bro. This is awesome. What, being what on earth is that? It's got really comfortable. I said to him, bro, why are you wearing your wife's socks for? He says, I'm not, they're mine. And I was like, that's even worse. <laughs> hey, it's gonna hate. Be prepared. Everyone has secrets.